I have a friend who's a pastor. Well, he's a retired pastor now. But he started out his ministry in a, a very small uh, mission mission type church, you know, where so the not not many people. And so a, a big part of his job as a pastor was to go door to door, neighborhood after neighborhood, knocking on doors, trying to talk to people about Jesus and invite them to church. And and the f first place where he did that was a, a place that he had never lived before. His family had never lived very far from what he would consider his hometown. But he tells the story of one day while he was out knocking on doors in random neighborhoods. He was in a neighborhood that he had never been in before. He walked up to a house that he had never seen before, he had never visited before, presumably to talk to somebody that he had never met before. And when he rang the doorbell, the door opened up and, and sure enough, it was somebody that he had never seen before. And so he was very surprised when the person he had never seen before said hello and then said his first name. Um, he said, have we met before? And the person said, you haven't met me. And then this person standing at the door went on to tell my pastor friend uh, all sorts of things about his life, about the, like the pastor's life. Um, and not just like random things, where you grew up and what you like and things like that, but, but very private things, things that he had never told anyone, including, including sins that he had committed in his past. And of course, you don't shout from the rooftops, but things that not even people close to him would have known and things that somebody who was just meeting him for the first time shouldn't know. And this person standing at the door went on and on and on saying all these horrible things that weren't, that weren't lies, they were true. Saying, I know you've done this, I know you've done that, I know, I know about this, I know about that. And then and got to the end of this very lengthy list and looked at my friend and said, and what do you think about that? And then said his name again. And my friend looked, looked the person in the eye, fully believing that this person wasn't the person, but that this was a demon speaking through a person. And he said, well, I think that Jesus died for all those sins and I'm a child of God. And then he walked away. And the demon couldn't do a thing about it. Now, if my friend didn't have that truth to hold on to, the truth of who Jesus is that we have faith in, that could have turned out very differently. That could have had a major impact on his ministry, but of course, but of course he did have that to hold on to. He had his faith. And that highlights for me the one goal that any demon has. However they try to influence your life, they don't care about controlling a person's body. They don't, they don't care about making a person strong or get them to speak in goofy or different kinds of ways. They don't care about those things. They only care about destroying your faith because they know something about the Jesus you have faith in. Number one, they know him. They know him. And number two, they are terrified of him. We see that in Mark chapter 5. So in Mark chapter 5, Jesus and his disciples, they see a man who is possessed by a demon. And it goes like this. It says, when he saw Jesus from a distance, this is the man who was possessed, he ran and fell on his knees in front of him. He shouted at the top of his voice, what do you want with me, Jesus, son of the most high God? So Jesus hadn't introduced himself. The demon already knew this is who that was. In God's name, don't torture me, the demon said. For Jesus had said to him, come out of this man, you impure spirit. And then Jesus asked him, what is your name? My name is Legion, he replied, for we are many. Then he begged Jesus again and again not to send them out of the area. They begged Jesus. They were terrified of him because they knew that Jesus could do whatever he wanted. They knew who Jesus was and they were terrified of him. And that's why they don't want you to have faith in him. Because they know there's nothing that they can do against the person with faith. This is why in Ephesians chapter 6, in the armor of God section, you know, when it says that our struggle is not against flesh and blood, but against the rulers, against the authorities, against the powers of this dark world, and against the spiritual forces of evil in the heavenly realms, that that's the bigger battle that we need to be concerned about. It tells you to put on the full armor of God and one of those pieces of armor. It says, take up the shield of faith with which you can extinguish all the flaming arrows of the evil one. Your faith is important and your faith is powerful. 
In the Gospel of Luke, chapter 22, Jesus was talking to, to Peter, to Simon Peter, and he said, Simon, Simon, he says, Satan has asked to sift all of you as wheat, but I've prayed for you, Simon, that your faith may not fail. And how is it that your faith will not fail? Well, like the demons, it's knowing who Jesus is. He is the Son of God himself, who put on human flesh to rescue us from anything that would rip us away from God, even our own sins. And so your faith is like the demons, knowing who Jesus is, but your faith is also unlike the demons, not needing to be afraid of him. Because who is this Jesus? Someone who also prays for you and who already did. On that night in the Garden of Gethsemane, when he prayed, Dear Father, please let there be another way. Because he knew the pain that was coming for him. If he was going to go through with giving you and me salvation and in forgiving us and making each of us one of God's own children, but there wasn't another way. And his father gave him the strength to make that sacrifice so that you could look, look to that cross and you could look at that empty grave and always see the same thing. Somebody who is worthy of our faith. So the friend that I told you about, he let, he let his faith lead the way. And stories like that give me incredible encouragement, not in a, hey, look at me, I'm such a great Christian kind of way, but as just the power of faith and action. If you have a story like that, a time in your life when your faith led the way, something that might to show us the power of faith and what a, what a beautiful thing it is to let Jesus lead us through life, uh, I'd ask you to consider sharing that story to give us all some encouragement so that we can face whatever is waiting for us today. If these messages are a blessing to you and your faith and you want more, we'd love to make it easy for you. You can just click this button right here to get connection to a YouTube subscription or if you want these devotions right into your inbox, you can click right here. YouTube here, email here, email here, YouTube there. Click both these buttons. We'll give you as much of Jesus as we can because we know that Jesus is all that we need.